We do not yet in the market demand strategy have any balance sheet commitments uh, in terms of projects, except maybe for the Swazi Raid link uh, and the possibility of expanding the line in the water bag uh, into uh, Botswana, uh, which we are exploring. Uh, but uh, other, other than that, we do not have, we do not yet have uh, balance sheet commitments. But what we do have on the uh, on the rest of the African continent is uh, our desire to sell refurbished locomotives and locomotives that we have uh, bought through the GE process, which is the uh, the. Uh, the diesel locomotives that we are currently manufacturing in South Africa to sell them onto the continent and also to sell our expertise uh, and our advice uh, on the on continent. Now you mentioned that you currently do not have budget for that but what time frame are we looking at where you would be able to make allowance for such projects? I'm not able to give you an answer right now and it would be presumptuous of, of me to say that we will be investing uh, money onto the, uh, uh, into other countries on the continent. Uh, as you know, it is a collaborative process. Uh, we have to talk to the countries that we'll be investing in first uh, and see what opportunities are there. And so I can't just say that uh, sitting here in South Africa, we are going into this country and so on. It will uh, surprise a lot of people. Having said that, though, the President Zuma is leading in the African Union, the North-South corridor which is a corridor that has been identified as uh, by uh, the African Union uh, uh, which is uh, from uh, Deben to Dar es Salaam and um, uh, so the president is leading that initiative and we are looking at uh, what role Transnet can play what role the South African government can play to make the north-south corridor a reality You've been speaking a lot uh, about public and private partnerships. One example is the project that's currently going on at the Durban port. Do you mind telling us a little bit more about that? Yes, uh, the, the, the Durban dig-out port is probably going to be the biggest uh, PSP uh, that has ever been done, I think, on the continent, but at least in South Africa, because uh, it will involve the digging out of the old Devon airport uh, and developing a port. And we have not budgeted for this in the 300 billion. And so we expect to mobilize the private sector to come in uh, with their own capital, uh, dig out, uh, develop a port, and operate it for a period of time, uh, some kind of build, operate, and transfer. And uh, yeah, this will be the biggest PSP ever. What is your view as to whether or not South Africa should be subsidizing port charges? Uh, as a matter of principle, I believe in um, that people should pay the true price of uh, a service or a commodity. Uh, and so subsidies distort uh, and, 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 and so does uh, not paying taxes. They don't reflect the true price. And uh, when the time comes for the true price to be paid, people may think that they're paying too much, whereas the truth of the matter was that they had been subsidized. A case in point is our electricity in South Africa, which for years has been subsidized, has been the lowest in the world. And now we have to have big increases to catch up with the increases that we never had over many, many years. Uh, and so that is unpleasant when it comes and sometimes could lead to revolt. So what we're paying at our ports is the right price uh, that represents an unsubsidized and that reflects the true cost of us providing that service. Uh, and so, uh, having said that, some other countries do subsidize and the ports don't pay tax and the capital expenditure is done by their governments rather than by their state-owned entities or the private sector. Uh, so, uh, uh, to the extent that this happens, it means that our prices look higher than the prices that people pay in other ports. It simply makes us uncompetitive. But perhaps we need to balance between what we call uncompetitive and our desire not to distort prices, uh, which is a debate that we need to have. Now, if subsidizing is not the way to go, what can Africa and South Africa do in order to remain competitive in the global environment? I think it is the quality of service. The World Bank has just released the uh, 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 performance index for uh, logistics, the logistics performance index. And out of 115 countries, South Africa is ranked uh, number 23. 
and South Africa is ranked number one amongst all emerging countries, uh, including ahead of China, which is number 27, and Russia, which is uh, further below, uh, 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 behind the line. Uh, and so the, the offering, uh, I think, has to be competitive, has to be um, uh, 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 reliable, it has to be world class the quality of the service and I think that as long as people are getting a good service um, well they will complain a bit about price but at least they know that they're getting a good service and so we're quite proud that as South Africa we were ranked as the World Bank as uh, uh, number three out of 115, 115 countries we rank ahead of a lot of developed countries uh, in terms of the logistics performance index. And so sometimes I think we're very hard on ourselves as a South Africa.